On this episode, we're gonna focus on food photography. Of course, you can just take a photograph in a beautiful cafe and be done. Or you can find a little spot by any sort of window. We're gonna pull away from the cafe and shoot up against this window, although honestly, it could be any window. And using a very little amount of equipment, get an incredibly different, better shot. So if I'm gonna start here with something very simple, I'm just using, again, that's natural light. I've got some fill light bouncing back. I'm gonna shoot um, for this one, top down. Um, and I can even go into a live mode on the camera. Because I'm gonna shoot this way, I'm probably gonna be at a f5.6 because I want more of this in focus. I'm gonna try other shots where that's not the case. But, um, I'm shooting with the 2470 f4 lens, the Z, the Nikkor Z lens, which um, affords me the ability to shoot similar to a macro. It's almost about, you can get about 12 inches away and still get a really nice strong focus. We can make this a lot more interesting just by switching up only the composition. So in this case, we've got this square plate. Um, we can look at playing with a di diagonal shot and a little bit more negative space using the wood grain of the table to do so. I'm shooting with a combination of 50-50. Um, half of the shot is the product, half the shot is negative space. I start getting a very different looking shot that I find significantly more interesting. Again, there are so many ways to be creative with backdrops or setting up a shot. Uh, this is one of them. You can use a dish towel. Um, you can use pretty much anything that you want. In this case, I can just mirror what I just did and start building again to a more interesting shot. So I'm gonna try one more thing. I mean, I could honestly try five million things. That's one of the coolest things about food photography. It doesn't get up and move. But uh, in this case, what I want to do is shoot from the angle of where the window is. I have the luxury right now of having door that I can open so I can step out into the natural light and do a similar sort of thing without having to move this whole setup. So use the golden side of this reflector just to give some nice warmth to the shot. I'm going to shoot like that where it's tilted down, but I'm using this. I want to keep this open because that's going to be my background. Oh, that's so pretty. So I'm shooting this at an F4. I can shoot a lot shallower if I wanted to, but I kind of like showing all this off. So I ended up getting looks that are pretty different from what I was getting before. i able to get kind of that white background as it plays off, this really soft bokeh as the image just kind of fetters off right there. And then the, this nice golden look that really works with the baked good um, because it really highlights that kind of warm buttery look even though it's a vegan croissant. So I had a lot of fun photographing this croissant. I'm gonna have a lot more fun eating this croissant. But you can kind of tell over just the short course of time we had photographing a few different ways that there are endless possibilities to frame, photograph, light, and position your food. So I'm gonna take these images, some of my favorites, jump into On One Photo Raw 2019, and start to pop them up even more. I am going to take this uh, delicious croissant, and I know it's delicious because I ate it after the shoot. And I'm gonna jump in here and I'd like to show the power of On One with just using one effect, what kind of adjustment you can make. Um, I'm not gonna consider a crop an effect. I'm gonna use that real quick just to line this shot, shot up a little closer to what I would like. Shooting top down, sometimes you don't have it perfectly cropped in camera, but I know that I can take this afterwards and do that work. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Good, that's closer. Um, I would probably work a little bit here to uh, quickly fix this, use the perfect eraser, just knock this out. So I'm just showing the top part. I don't need that little tiny speck down there of color when it distracts from the overall look and the perfect eraser tool is perfect for that. So. Um, I'm going to take this right now and I'm going to go add a filter and I'm going to simply use dynamic contrast as the entire tool I'm using for editing here just to show the power of it. Um, I'm going to pop through more. I would expect I'd use either soft or natural but sometimes stepping through the one by one helps me to recognize which one I want to start with out of the gate. Ooh, I think it's surreal. I'm actually going to go with surreal so I'm glad I did that. And I like how it pops up the texture and the flakiness. 
I don't love how it makes it look uh, harder and a little darker uh, because it's very soft in many parts. So I'm going to take this tool and just, if you can see how soft it gets and how harsh it gets, I'm going to bring it down quite a bit and just bring back some of that softness without losing that sharpness up here. I'm going to look at this plate and bring up some of the whites. See the difference here and there. Just bring it up a lot brighter. Because it's bright and I want to watch the highlights here, make sure none of the highlights are broken. I'm going to manage that a little bit with this tool that does a really nice job. And I want some more um, warmth. I want a little bit more of that buttery look on the croissant. So I'm going to bring up some of the vibrance. And you can see, let's see, bring it down and all the way up. You can see what a difference it makes having those purples pop and the warmth in the croissant. And then I'm going to look at that black tool that fades it out. This gives it a lot of contrast. Probably just bring in a little bit of contrast right about there. And then pop the shadows up just a little bit. And Without using any other effect, just this effect, you can see quite a difference here before and after. Makes a big, big difference and gives me my final product.